Alright, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Forge 2. Here on my channel, Idle Wisdom. We're here again in Medab, as you probably can tell. <laughs> Last episode, Lucian and his party traveled to the camp of the, of the Loyalists. The old school type Loyalists. They're a camp of Loyalist sa uh, Sapers who are trying to make life difficult for the Barzites. They're led by, uh, what is it, McNulty, the Shaper, and there's, I think, Kima, the Agent, and Bunk. Is it Bunk, the, the Guardian? They don't much, they really dislike the Barzites. And I imagine they don't like the Takers either at all, but they didn't really say anything about them. They don't seem to like Zachary either, though. They seem to think that Zachary was a traitor and still at heart remains a traitor. So that was kind of interesting. I think today we, if we have look where we can go, we have over here to the South Rising Road. This is the camp of the, old, of the Shapers, the Loyalist encampment. From there we could either go to the mountain base, to the, that's the over towards the boundary between the Taker and the Barzite lands. We can go to the Trapped Forest, which sounds lovely. Or we can go to the South Rising Road. Or we could backtrack a bit and go to either the Clockwork Maze or the Upper Research Hall. Now I'm thinking maybe maybe we need to get a little bit more powerful before we go meet the Barzites. I think Lucian's starting to think Am I strong enough? I, I'm not I'm not entirely certain. So why don't we go let's hmm. Let's go to the clockwork maze. That sounded interesting. Some mad shaper apparently is there. I think what was it? Yeah, no, that's Geth Gates. The people I think the guards out here outside of Geth said that there was some mad shaper up here. I think we disabled a golem before, so maybe we can make our way through here without too much problems, but we'll see. The ceilings in these tunnels are very low and cramped. The walls are covered with rough boards. They were put up very clumsily, as if by a machine. And they're sort of stable, but a good earthquake would probably collapse this whole complex. The smells of oil and ozone are heavy in the air, and you hear clanging and rumbling in the distance. Deep ruts have worn into the stone floor by the constant passing of heavy feet. That that clanging and rumbling in the distance, that's that 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 telltale Gene Forge game sound. I, I mean, whether it's the Gene Forge itself or other shaping machinery, I really love that sound. That rumble of mach that sh machinery. This is some sort of workshop where large things are being constructed. Whether they are friendly or hostile remains to be seen. But considering your track record so far, hostile seems a safe bet. A set of tracks for carts leads off into the darkness. They're probably here to move supplies to the workshops. You notice that there's no sign of foot track near the tracks. Hmm, interesting. Alright, let's see what... Oh, there's some lead bar or iron bars. Yeah, we're not going to pick those up. They're just heavy and not very useful. What's in here, though? Eh, a bunch of tools and a beaker. Big deal. Are there golems? Yes, there are. A golem trudges towards you. It is very strange. It has a rock shell, like all such magical creations. However, it is cracked in many places, revealing its innards. In some places, you see machinery. In others, you see pulsing, fleshy material. This is one of the magical guardians guarding the dusty back quarters of this place. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it, clear, it clearly regards you as an intruder. The golem looks down at you, and it buzzes and clicks. After a moment, a few moment, after a few moments, it says, "Intruder unknown, unallowed to be eradicated." Some of the exposed machinery looks a little vulnerable. If you are quick and lucky, you might be able to get a living tool into one of the tiny holes in its chest and deactivate it. Well, let's try that again, see if we can do it again. We'll use a living tool to deactivate the golem. You lurch forward and plunge the living tool into the golem's chest. It tries to pull away, but you're too skilled. 
you direct the tool's tentacles into the golem, finding something that feels like a sensor. With the pull and the twist, you break it. The, go the golem stumbles back. There. The go My tongue is stumbling too. The golem stumbles, stands upright, and then walks on its way. Its sensors have been damaged. You don't think that it can see you anymore. Well, click buzz. Meow, meow, meow. We got a. Oh my gosh, 156 experience for that. Jeez. Wow. Alrighty. Well, that's what you get for putting a heavy investment in your mechanics. I think we can. We can steamroll this place. This is one of the many workshops in these caves. The work done here is part is part shaping and part something else. You can faintly smell essence, but there are also tools everywhere. You can't understand what any of the machinery does. At the edge of the room you can see a golem. Though it looks like it's in perfect condition, it's completely immobile. Maybe it's not quite complete. Or maybe it was never activated. Who can say? Looks like there's some shaping equipment on this table. And a living tool. Nice. Shaper equipment. And we'll leave the rest. Oh, yeah, here. Whir ping. The golem buzzes and hums. However, it has no brain, only machinery, and it can't talk to you. Interesting. More shaper equipment. Eh, scalpel and a lamp. Lantern. Alright. So far, so good. Uh oh, there's another one. A golem defender trudges up to you. It looks identical to the one that you saw earlier, and it buzzes and clicks. After a few minutes, it says, Intruder unknown, unallowed to be eradicated. Like the other golems, this one's armor is incomplete, and it has a few small holes in the chest area. Should we try commanding it? You are part creation. I command you to let me by. Just you are an intruder. Eradicate pain. Alright, whatever. And we get it. Oh, there's another one. Jeez. Hey, come here. Experience. Experience. Get over here. It's like, no, do not deactivate me. Uh, unless that's the one who... Nope, here. Can we say, hello, Gollum? Who created you? Whir, ping, Kari. You are intruder. Eradicate. I am Kari. Your orders are to let me by. Let me by. Click whir. The Gollum checks its sensors using its tiny shaped brain to try to figure out if you are, in fact, its master. In the end, it can't decide, so it plays it safe. Ping. Yes, master. You may pass. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> we tricked it. What a chump. What a chump. <laughs> Xander's like, oh, yeah, don't get too freaking dumb. <laughs> Please with yourself, pal. <laughs> I mean, it's good and all, but it has a very tiny brain. Oh, there's a little, ideally, let's save, actually. A switch. There's a switch over there. How about these? This machinery is still working, or maybe it's not working. It is humming and clicking, but you have no idea what it's supposed to be doing. It seems dangerous, so you leave it alone. It's probably smart there, Lucian. How about you? Nope, nothing. How about you? There's a set of controls here. They are standard shaper controls. A fleshy mass with little protrusions and knobs emerging from a protective stone shell. Fortunately, the living part is still alive and functional. The pedestal has a single word carved into it. Gollum. Should we try to use it? You poke and prod at the little controls for a while. After a little trial and error. Man, my voice is going out today. You figure out the order they were meant to be used in. They make a little chiming noise. Or ping. Hi. Oh, he's friendly. We activate him. Oh, cool. Pleased to meet you there, Mr. Clockwork Gollum. <laughs> we activated a Clockwork Gollum. Or ping. Oh, the abandoned Vlish got a level. And we need to think of a name for that dang critter. Uh, what is a good name for a Vlish? I think... I have a name. 
It's not, I don't know why. Oh, come on, y'all. Get out of the way. Okay, everyone in there. There's healing pods and curing pod. What else? Some meat, we'll leave it. Oh, he is following us. Oh, no kidding, that's great. And a bunch of meal. Here. Lucy, get in there and... Living tool. How about in there? Nope, nothing. Alright, cool. Everybody out. Come on. Come on, you. No, 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 no. Ah, uh, Lucy, get your butt over here. Put your little golem out. Dude. For reals. Are you coming? There we are. <laughs> We're king and all that. Uh oh. There's another golem. Let's see. Let's just deactivate it with a living tool. Bam sis. Mwahaha, there's another one. Haha, <laughs> I'm Kari. Mwahaha, <laughs> you may pass. Man, we're just tricking everybody. I guess we're not getting any more experience. Hmm. Did I already move that? Alright. What's down here? Oh yeah, let's let's I was gonna abandon Flish. Let's rename him. We're gonna call you Terrence. There we are. Well done, Terrence. Well met, I, I mean. Oh, let's see what's in here. And let's actually use our mental magic. We might need those living tools to take care of golems. Four, come on. No, oh, hit the hit the button. What is in here? You get in. Oh. One, two, all right, four. Let's see what's in here. Oh, bunch of iron. Wow, that's a lot of iron. Gauntlets, chainmail, steel gauntlets. Wow, those are nice. A pure steel ring. Oh my goodness, it's probably really heavy. A major healing pod. Actually, I think I'm gonna take. No, not you. The chainmail. Actually, you know what? Let's take the the iron. There's so much of it here. Oh wait, here four. Get over here. I want to say I need an amphora for something, but I'm not sure if that's true. We'll just grab one for the sake of argument. For the sake of argument, we're gonna go back to the beginning of the area and drop a bunch of stuff because it's probably overburdening us. Lucian's probably way overburdened. Let's see what's. Oh yeah, he's carrying 183 pounds right now. <laughs> That's probably because of the mainly because of the iron bars, but the pure steel is also heavy. But it's one of those items that you need for. Something or other. Oh, there's another switch. We can activate this column. We'll come back and do that. No, oh, hmm. Let's do that right now, actually. I don't. Oh, I lost track of where I am. Right here. Here, go activate this dang switch. Use the controls. Make a tiny chiming sound. Oh boy. We got, we got another golem. Well, look at our stats, though. Look. Mechanics, level 10. Leadership, level 10. It's pretty dang good. So, all that leveling of... Here, of our stats has definitely paid off. Four. You get up here. Now let's um, drop. 
gauntlets. Chainmail vest. The shape of equipment. Amphora. And all this iron. And this pure steel ring. I think he used that for making crafting special items or something or other. I can't remember. Drop it. Yeah, that's good. Right on. Let's go. We'll continue back over. Well, we'll go up right here. Make our way around. Maybe we should save. Let's save again. Right here. You know, uh, people sometimes, not often, but every once in a while people remark about how Gene Forge is kind of like, I've heard it called biopunk, <laughs> but it's kind of cool, you know, as opposed to like, you know, steampunk or cyberpunk. It's like a, yeah, it, it's really pretty cool. It's a underexplored genre of fiction. And Jeff Vogel does a really good job of exploring it in the Gene Forge games. I think we're gonna pick up this. I've decided the iron that's in here, not maybe elsewhere, but in here, and make one trip to back to Dry Peak and just drop off like a whole crap load of iron at Zuniga's shop. Might be amusing, if nothing else. But yeah, the the whole you know this biopunk theme is pretty cool. I've seen a little bit of stuff here and there. I can't remember what they're called. There's a movie with Jude Law that really sucked. But, oh, here, um... Deactivate, waha. Let's see, what. how much did that drop us down to? Eh, 70, okay, that, one pound. Living tools apparently weigh one pound each. Okay, here it is. Okay, got that. But yeah, there was some movie with Jude Law. I had read about it in, it was it The Matrix and Philosophy. One of those books they used to make when there would be a movie that was somewhat popular. And if it had anything at all that got, you know, philosophy nerds talking, <laughs> they'd make a book about it. Like, you know, The Simpsons in Philosophy, you know, Your Mom in Philosophy, whatever. <laughs> And, um, uh oh, there's another one. Hi, I am. You no, know, let's, yeah, no, let's actually. I am car. You may pass. I don't know if I'm gonna need any living tools towards the end of this place. Can't remember, so let's not use them all up willy nilly. But yeah, but that book, it, one of the essays was a comparison of. The Matrix with this other. You don't touch any. Oh, I didn't touch anything. Oh, here, let's, let's touch something this time. Yay, chiming noise. We got another. We have three golems coming with us. Wow. I guess I didn't have as much mechanics last time I played this game because I don't remember having all these golems on my side. <laughs> Yay, let's see. I'm going to deactivate you. Bam, sis. But yeah, and the, the author of one of the essays was like comparing The Matrix with this other movie that had Jude Law in it, and apparently she thought it was better, or he or she, I think, I don't remember, the, the author thought it was in some ways better because it didn't sort of sanitize the fleshiness the, of human beings like The Matrix did. The Matrix is a very sanitary, Oh jeez, wow. More iron, more living tools. It's a very sanitary experience. Everything is very clean and... Oh jeez, we're trapped. No! Oh, we're a click. Okay, y'all. I need y'all to get out of my way. Please, let's go. Oh, thank goodness. Wow. That was, um... Inconvenient. <laughs> I thought we were going to be trapped forever. Let's get back over here to the beginning again. 
everybody over here. But yeah. As opposed to this other movie, which it was like, you know, had these other worlds. It was kind of like, you know, almost like a prototype of Inception in some ways. There's like worlds within worlds. Is this the dream? Is this reality? Whatever. But it was very meaty and fleshy and kind of gross. It was a dumb movie. It was really lame. But it had some good ideas in it, but it did not have the... It was not done very well. But it was kind of a biopunk, I, I, I guess you could say. Dealy. And I, I don't know. I... I find that to be an underexplored area of fic fiction. Let's see, what are we at now? Okay, 55. That's way better. Right on. Man, that's a lot of iron bars he was carrying. He was pumping iron. The pump. But yeah, this game, the Gene Forge series, really does a decent job of this. Uh-oh. Click her. Um. I'm Hari. Yes, Master. I wonder what they sound like. They probably don't sound like, yes, Master. Probably like, yes, Master. Or, yes, Master. Or, yes, Master. Maybe like, bye, you okay? <laughs> when you enter this large chamber, you see something amazing. It's clearly the goal, the apex, the true achievement of the work that took place here. It's amazing. It's a Dracon Gaul, made of smooth stone. Do I know what a Dracon is at this point? That's a good question, right? It towers above you, staring at you with gem-like eyes. Its head swivels, its eyes swivel in its head, following, following you as you move. Actually, when you look closer, you see that it doesn't look entirely complete. There are some holes in its armor shell, revealing machinery and shaped flesh. You can't see at this point how you might be able to take advantage of, of its weaknesses. The creature doesn't seem hostile right now. However, it looks like it's guarding the East Passage. Ooh, wow. That's cool looking, Buzz. Let's actually, um, go over here first. Maybe we can use these other golems to help us fight that dude. That golem. That thing. Ooh, there's another one. Oh, let's activate. Activate. Try to con use the controls. Yay, chiming noise. Woohoo, yeah, chime on in. If I may chime in. We have four golems following us. This is wild. Here, um, go over here, pick up this. Ooh, a living tool. And a iron bar. Now. Let's actually go down here then. I thought that maybe this was going to be the way into the final area, but no. I think for that that dragon statue or a golem. Let's see what is in here. It will take one living tool. Let's just use mental magic. And sis, four. Actually, um, hmm. now you stupid golems. Zero. Ah, these dum-dums. Oh my goodness, more iron bars. Alright, well, this will be our final gift to <laughs> Zuniga. Living tools and mine crystal. Wow. Let's get out of here. Alright, yeah, come right over here. Just so the other guy can come out. There we are. We might need those golems if we have to fight that big Dracon one. Now, I, have we met? We haven't met any Dracons yet, so I don't know how he knows what a Dracon is. He's met some Drakes, some Cryo Drakes. I don't know that he knows what Dracons are yet. A giant upright golem. I mean, a dra dragon golem. Drake golem. Alright, wow. This is crazy. <laughs> What a haul. What a haul. Alright, let's get back up here. And then we'll save and test our might or see what destiny has in store for us.
going to save again, actually, because I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm going to actually cast my protection spell on my boosting spell on. Well, I'm glad I saved. Ay ay ay! Mortally wounded, you're dead. <laughs> that wasn't nice. Uh, nothing said he would be nice. Oh my gosh. Da -da -da -da. Alright, let's uh, click click. I'm suddenly overcome by the feeling that in a previous life I got destroyed. So let's actually uh, mass energize and protection. Let's see, three. Can we talk to it? No. No, 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 don't get... Well, I, I blew that one. I blew that one entirely. Well, he's not... <clears throat> Let's try this again. Come on, get out of my way! Lucy, get out of the way, you idiot! Here, number one, get up. Right. Oh, jeez! Oh, you jerk! Oh, poor little Crystallis got killed. Utter turd. I don't think we can beat this guy. Oh! Oh! Man. Let's do Seer. Oh, come on, Lucy, you turtle. Get out of there. You can't do any good back there. Come on, golems, get over there. <laughs> we can't even touch this guy. These golems can hit him, but oh, golems get over there! Frostbing, you just come chill over there, like literally chill. Here. Come for a little bit. Let's recast our mass energize. Oh, there they come. Very good. Very good. So yes, that's why you need those golems. They they're gonna beat this nasty thing butt for us. I don't think we've hit it once. Oh, good job, Frostfang. Hmm. Blow to the clockwork dracon causes it to lurch back and tremble. You hear wheels and gears spin frantically inside. It starts to glow red hot as powerful magic begins to work. As you watch in horror, rents in the creature's sides begin to close up. Leaking gaskets seal themselves. The monster is regenerating itself. As the creature heals itself, you notice that the cre as the creature heals itself, you notice that the creature has a hole in its side, not far from the bottom. Some machinery is exposed. Let's see, let's use a living tool to disable the exposed machinery. Ignoring the searing heat, you take a living tool and plunge it into the hole in the Dracon side. You direct the little creature's tentacles around looking for some sort of weak spot. Soon you sense something delicate, running up into the creature's body. As the armor begins to grow back over the exposed hide, you get a grip on the thin part with the tool and pull mightily. Just as the heat kills the tool, the part snaps and the clockwork dracon shudders and twitches. Smoke and flame start to pour out of it. Oh wow, it is dead. Aye, wow, that's, um, that was costly. 
Jeez. Well, you fellas did a great job. But, um, how? Poor. What did we get? Infiltrator's charm? Let's take it. What is it? Oh, jeez, wow, look at this. This is a charm. It just stays in our inventory. Plus one to leadership and mechanics. That is really good. That's really good. And we lost one of our claw bugs, and we lost Crystallis. Man, indeed. All right, well, all is fair in love and war, they say. I don't know if that's true. It's probably not true. Since they say it, it's probably completely inauthentic. <laughs> I have no idea, actually. Dude, for reals. That sucks. Oh, jeez. Incomplete golem. Alright. Let's... What is going on in here? Come on, y'all. Get in here. I might need you guys to back me up. Rom Remus, Romulus, get out of the way. Arr. You. This golem is only partially completed. It looks like it might be able to move, but only slowly and with difficulty. It is covered with dust. No one has worked on it for months. Huh. Four. Get down here, let's loot the place. Woohoo, loot the place! Essence pod. Shaper equipment. Research notes. Eh. I don't think we need the research notes, to be honest. I think those are only for if you're going to be a Barzite. Just for the sake, just so you know. I do think we need pen and ink, though, for a quest. I'm just going to take that, just to be... save time later. If I'm not mistaken, I could be. Nothing interesting. Woohoo, yeah, my favorite prize. A rogue drake tendon. That's going to be useful. And demon's bile. Wow. Emerald. This is great. Those are useful for crafting. As you probably figured. Iron, iron, living tools. Woohoo, yeah! And how about here? Oh, wait, no, here. Let's, let's here, let's here. Essence pod, very good. Looks like a, a bedchamber. At last, you find the master of this complex. Unfortunately, she is deceased. It looks like she died a while ago. She was very old. Based on appearances, she died of natural causes. It's a shame that she spent her last years like a hermit in these passages. She was clear, clearly brilliant, brilliant, and might have been able to teach the shapers a lot. Of course, maybe they wouldn't have been interested in mere mechanics. But of course, she wasn't really just doing mere mechanics. She was kind of like... I mean, they, they're they right. They probably wouldn't want to have anything to do with it. But she was doing that kind of like cybernetic shaping, like mix a mixing of machinery and cybernetic... I mean, and, you know, living shape being. How about this book? You read through the book on the, of lab notes. The title page identifies the shaper at, as Kari. You learn about her years spent here. She spent time making larger and larger golems, teaching them to dig out tunnels and shore up the ceiling with wood, and setting them to protect her. It's very interesting, but unfortunately, she didn't spend much time writing down her techniques and secrets. Most of the secrets of making her amazing creatures died with her. Fortunately, you're able to learn a few things from her notes, and your skill with mechanics improves. That is great! We have, what, level 12 now? Let's take a look. Oh, we gained a level somewhere. But yes, we gained a level from that right now, and then we got another level from that charm. That is really good. We'll up our level later. Right now, let's see, does she have... Oh, okay. Yeah, I know you're sad that your buddy died, but I need to check this body out. A robe, steel dagger, gold ring, tinker's gloves. Oh, those are very good. Look at these. Plus two to mechanics. Let's take the gloves. We'll leave her other stuff. Got 242 coins. Robe, bronze sword, swarm crystals. We'll take these gems. Cloak, robe, teacup, teapot. Yeah. Cloak, submission thorns, and reaper thorns. Wow. Yeah. 
let's just drop these submission forms. And get the Reaper thorns. Those are worth more money. We can come back and get the others, I suppose, but I don't know. We'll see. And it's just regular sandals. Alright, cool. Well, that's that. Dang, busted. Well, that was very successful. Kind of costly, though. I was afraid that Frostbang had gotten killed, but he did not, but still. Is it Frostfang? Yeah, Frostfang. No, let's return again. I'm not getting all confused. <laughs> Hitting random buttons, which is not a smart idea. I think what we'll do is we'll go back to town and drop this stuff and then come back here and get the rest of it. Although maybe we'll do that next time. I don't know. This I don't know, we'll see. Can we pick up the iron bars? Yes we can. And H. Yeah. We don't have space for the rest of that, but we can get rid of the we can take the iron right now. Let's go actually go to Dry Peak. Let's see if anything bad happens. We have what's his face in our party, I don't know. Xander? Like Xander, dude, just act like uh, a loyal survival, just for this, just for the moment. I know it's embarrassing, but you know, just for the moment. Let's see, here he is, and we're gonna sell some metal to him. He takes it eagerly. Thank you, Shaper. Um, let's see, trading? Does he have any money? He does! Let us... Tinker's Gloves? No. Ring of the Eye? No. Oh wait, let's sell these Reaper Thorns. And let's sell these... Gems. We could sell this at... Yeah, interesting. Meh. Infiltrator's Charm? Gemstones? No. Alright, cool. Thanks, dude. See, he's pretty cool. He's pretty chill. All these other people are really, really judgy. As soon as you, you know, say servos ain't so bad, they're like, oh, pff, get the hell out of here. We hate you. Alright, let's go back to Medab. Right quick. And we'll drop some stuff off here, and then we'll go back and get the rest of our stuff. You know, the pure steel ring and our other gear. The pure steel ring is very important. The rest of it is just, you know, good to have. Alright, you come over here. Now, let's drop the Drake Tendon, the Demon's Vial. Pen and ink. Tinker's glove will probably keep with us just so we can use it when we need to. Hmm. Alright. Let's actually go to the inn right quick. And we'll sell some stuff to Laura. Laura. Bam. Alright. There's that. And now let's go. Whew. There's a lot of doing involved here. We gained a ton of stuff. That Kari lady was definitely a master of the mechanical. We gained so much mechanical loot. Alright, let's get first the pure cell ring, then our shining shield, the shaper equipment, amphora, da 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 da. Very good. Eh, who cares about those submission thorns? I don't care. Don't care. Alrighty. 
We're gonna Fort Muck right quick and just sell the gems to Hawk. And then go back to Madab. Gemstones, emeralds, yeah, yeah. Man, we make, we're making money like crazy. I wish I did. I made money like crazy in real life. <laughs> All right. Back to Madame. Let's stop by. No, let's go to talk to Laura first. I think we have some more sheep with them, right? Yes, we do. Hey, Laura. Bam, sis. Very good. Got more experience. And let's actually know right here. Four. Go sell to this merchant. Zion. I want to buy. Alright, she has really good prices. We're just going to sell her a bunch of garbage she doesn't need. Some mine crystal. Yeah, sure, why not? Chainmail. Shining shield? No. Steel gauntlets, yes. Well, those weren't worth very much. Darn it. Alright, next time I won't pick them up. Alright, cool. Thank you, thank you. And let's go back up here. Next time we will uh, level up and shape some new creations to replace the ones we lost. Four. You come in here. Let's drop stuff. Pure still rain, yes. Hmm. We'll drop the shining shield. With, eh. Oh, I don't know. Spellcraft. We'll just drop it for now. It's too heavy to be carrying around. There we are. Cool. Alright, three. Get in here. You guys. No, 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 no. Here. Just chill. You guys just kind of hang out. Alright, cool. Alright, on that note, I want to say thank you for joining me for this episode of my Let's Play of Gene Forge 2 here on my channel, Idle Wisdom. Take care, y'all.